going beyond the headlines. Asking the questions you want answered. Exploring government policies and how they impact you. We are delving deeper. Good evening and welcome to Delving Deeper. I'm your host, Sonolala. Joining us this evening are Dr. Inchan Miajon, the Chief Executive Officer of iGovTT, along with Irwin Williams, the head of the Software Development Unit. Good evening, gentlemen, and welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Hey, good evening. So first of all, the National ICT Company Limited. It's basically the formal way to say iGovTT. What is iGovTT? So iGovTT is the government's ICT company that does a whole host of services. We've been around for the last 15 years, as a matter of fact, next month is our 15th anniversary, and it covers things like software development, we have Owen here today, contract management, procurement, as a matter of fact, we've procured most of the ICT equipment that you would have seen for ministries, departments, and agencies. We currently have $200 million in procurements on the book, we do contract and project management. We currently have about $275 million of projects under contract as well. And we have several other areas, including cybersecurity, that we'll delve into today. I would assume you would work in tandem as well with the Minister of Digital Transformation. Um, tell us about your relationship with these ministries to enhance uh, you know, effectiveness in the public service. So it's a great question. So we currently serve out of the 177 ministries, departments, and agencies, 88% of them. So that's about 156. We serve all of the ministries. So the 22 ministries, we serve them. Our ministry, the Lion Ministry, as you indicated, is the Ministry of Digital Transformation, which has been around for about two years. But that ministry is a transformational one. And we are actually quite happy and proud to be under that ministry because it is now pushing digital transformation for the entire country. And as we go further, I'll talk about some of those initiatives. When you say you serve these ministries, exactly what it is to the average citizen, if you want to explain it to them, what it is exactly do you serve and how do you help them? So some of the ministries would want um, a procurement. They would want to, Ministry of National Security may want something. Ministry of Education may want laptops. We would do that. Some of them would come and they would ask for expertise. We have a highly qualified, passionate set of professionals and they are the ones we are 140 people thereabouts and they're the ones that can provide subject matter expertise so it could be consultancy design development and a whole host of other services so it depends on what the ministry's need is from an ICT perspective we are then able to fulfill that Mr. Williams tell us about in terms of iGovTT we, we always hear this name iGovTT how long has it been around and um, you know uh, doing basically what it does. As Dr. Mirajan said, 15 years, so we're celebrating next month. Hopefully we're really celebrating, looking forward to the, the fun. Uh, and in that time, uh, we've been building solutions. And when I say building, building solutions doesn't just mean, from my perspective, building software. It often starts with sitting with ministries, departments, and agencies, understanding their needs and their, their challenges, and crafting together with them a solution to deal with whatever challenge is of the day. So over the last 15 years, it may have started with networking or hardware or just internet access and broached into, as essentially the ministries and departments and agencies grew into the space of digital activity and digital use, we've been along with them on a journey, moving along with them and delivering solutions based on their needs. Just a couple of days ago, we would have seen the launch of the Cybersecurity Investment Tax Allowance, CETA, as it were, the management system. Um, tell us, what exactly is CETA? So when the Minister of Finance announced the allowance last year in the budget, uh, he specifically said, and iGovTT will handle the yeah. uh, essentially issuing of, of certifications related to the allowance. What that actually means is if you wanted to get access to this allowance via the Inland Revenue Division, you would have to go through a process that iGovTT designed, and this process would include providing some proof of the cybersecurity investments you would have made, whether it's purchases for hardware or software, 
along with things like receipts, purchase orders, just a regular flow of, of a business in terms of establishing we made this investment. And what the iGov TT team designed is a system for receiving those documents, uh, reviewing them, providing feedback about the, the purchases, and then at the end, providing a digital certificate, a verifiable certificate that allows the Inland Revenue Division to confirm that what you've said you've purchased has been reviewed by the professionals in IGOV TT. And the big thing is, it's entirely virtual. You don't need to come down to an office. There's no need to print and drop off a receipt anywhere. You log on to the CETA application, CETA.gov.tt, and we will take you through the process from there. Any questions and concerns you have, we're well able to handle it, all virtually. No need to leave your business place or your home to enter any physical premises to get this done. So Dr. Mayor John, this CETA would have been announced by the Finance Minister in the last budget, 2023-24. How long has this been in the making? So, uh, so we were surprised when we heard it and we were excited by it. I wanted to give you a little bit of background context globally why this is important. If you look at the global population, 5.2 billion people are internet users, 5.2 billion. That represents about 60% of the global population. If you look at how many people are social media users, that's 5 billion people. Let's look at Trinidad and Tobago. About 1.21 million people are internet users and approximately 1 million social media. We have probably 125% penetration for mobiles, so that represents more than our population. What does that mean? That means that the threat landscape, the digital ecosystem is wide. And cybersecurity is where a bad actor would come in and cause a problem. And you can see from that picture how important it is. So when you look at our local landscape, cybersecurity is critical in protecting infrastructure, in protecting your business community continuity, in protecting just your business financial records, as well as customers' data. So we were excited because what that does, it helps the entire ecosystem. Usually, you would hear government looking at this as a defense in depth strategy. So they would want to protect themselves. What this means is a whole of country approach. And I have not seen in any of my readings or travel any other country that did such a powerful initiative. We've seen some cyber attacks recently, even in the government service, uh, TT Post and, and so on. Um, how is this gonna help and ensure that uh, the mechanism, the safety mechanism is in place? So the, the global cyber crime number is expected to be 10.5 US trillion dollars in 2025. Now I need you to absorb that figure. That's not billion. The global GDP is approximately 100 trillion. So that's 10% of the globe's GDP. What does that mean? A bad actor in that space, it's lucrative. They can develop state actors. It means that they're well-funded and they have the ability to go after small, medium sized or large enterprises, which you would have seen. According to the, the Ministry of National Security, over the last five years, there have been approximately 205 successful cyber attacks. What this means is that as a whole country approach, you are strengthening your national digital ecosystem. So if you look at the Ministry of Digital Transformation and their pillars, it's digital government, digital economy, and the digital society. So those things, when they come together, cause an ecosystem to develop digitally. And when you look at the third party providers, right? So uh, you can imagine the private sector having connections to the government. If they are unsafe, it means that we are unsafe. If we are unsafe, it means they are unsafe. So a whole of country approach for cybersecurity and resilience is critical. So we're very excited about this. Now, obviously, this is going to um, enhance the landscape of the, the government infrastructure, government services, and so on. But is it also open to private entities, private businesses? Yes. So, so it, it actually is only for private entities. So any business registered within Trinidad and Tobago can apply for this. So I gave my example recently when we launched it. We created this person called Wendy. And Wendy lives in the East. She has a nice tutoring academy. She loves her students. Wendy one day made the mistake of clicking on a phishing email. And if you don't know what that is, that's where there's malicious code in a link that you can click that actually infects your computer. It means that her reputation suffered, her business suffered, she had no backups, 
no um, antivirus, and it caused a lot of problems. So Wendy is an example of any one of us. Sonel, it could be you. It could be your cell phone that can be hacked. It could be any one of us. So when you look at developing a whole of government and whole of country approach, it really is strengthening your digital ecosystem from a cyber resilience perspective. Mr. Williams, in terms of this management system, what does this mean? What does this uh, mean for the, you know, the entire population of Trinidad and Tobago? So there are a few ways to look at this, right? First off, as, as Dr. Mirajan said, from a business perspective, you may, be, may, you may have had cybersecurity as important, but maybe not right now. You have other things to take care of. For being able to demonstrate your ability to fund it by simply accessing the allowance is a big deal because now we can help businesses raise the level of priority of cybersecurity. Cyber Get those purchases done and increase your posture around resilience. We like to talk about resilience in, in IT because oftentimes systems go down. When you build systems these days, building it with a sense that it will never fail is never the right perspective. It's how well can we recover from failure. And so from a resilience perspective, cybersecurity purchases, both for hardware and software, allow you to detect when someone is trying to, to attack or bring down your business. And if you need to recover because you've made the appropriate investments in storage and, and recovery, that's also part of what's, what's on offer here. From a national perspective, you have businesses who can dive in. But there's another piece of the puzzle that is important. Cybersecurity is still a specialized space. It's expensive to train and expensive to learn. And sometimes you spend time not knowing who will come asking you for your services. What the ministry has done by making this allowance possible has created a space for a whole new cottage industry around cybersecurity to develop. You have pra practitioners, you have consultants, you have those who are providing the software and services to other businesses who could help businesses see how this thing will be paid for and therefore justify why the spend makes sense and why they therefore should be in a job. So it's overall not just impacting the business or impacting government's sense of reliability in terms of trust with the acting, it's also allowing an industry to develop around us that I think is significant and can have a major impact for us, not just now but in the future as we build up our capacity and our, our citizenry. Dr. Mayor John, are you at liberty to say how much this cost or what was the budget for this particular system? Right, so we didn't spend anything outside of our usual funding that we currently have. So what you would have seen, and Owen is here, Owen's team is amazing. Owen is amazing, and we developed this in-house. So this is not from a third party provider, it's not from an external provider, and we are okay to work with a lot of governments and parties externally. We work with the government of Estonia, we work with people who come to help us build things like our interoperability platform. We work with the government of India. So we understand there's a lot of best practice there, but our team built this. So it's, uh, my minister usually says built in Trinidad for Trinidad and the rest of the world. This is an example of that. Tell us about what does the future outlook look like for uh, iGov TT? It's very bright. So we would have indicated that the company's 15 years old and we started on things like the GovNet, the wide area network, um, email addresses for, for the government, procurement, contract management, etc. We are now moving into cybersecurity as a service, software development as a service, and we have some very interesting things around the corner that the ministry is doing. So interoperability that Owen could go into depth. We're looking at some other projects such as our ISC, an international service center that will provide a greater level of support for some of these services. We're building, get this, a tier four data center. Now, in the entire region, there's only one in Curacao. So there's no tier four data centers outside of the region, inside of the region. And a tier four data center is the highest availability data center. Now, what does that mean? It means that, for example, if you look at, and I want to talk a bit about geopolitical and where we sit from a geographic perspective, we're right below the hurricane belt. When you look at disaster recovery up the islands, if, and we're talking about um, recovery as well, if a country has a disaster, which we've seen, how do you recover? It's difficult. If you have redundancy within Trinidad and Tobago, which we'll be offering via digital embassies. A digital embassy means that the space, that server, that rack is yours as a country. Nobody else can touch it. So you have sovereignty, which is usually a question that people have when you're putting your data outside of your jurisdiction. And of course, we will utilize it for our sensitive programs, 
our sensitive software that we have. We will house it there. And that's going to be the basis that's going to really be the foundation for several of the things that we're going to do. And we talked about interoperability built on X, X roads with the Estonian government. We have things coming from the government of India that I'm not at liberty to speak about at the moment. But all of it is for citizen service delivery. You talked about the tier 4 data center. Is that currently being built? So that, that's just been awarded. The contract has just been awarded, and the construction will start soon. When can we see this built, and how long is it going to take us? So we are hoping that it will be built and be in commission by next year. By next year? Yes. In terms of you know, what sort of technology, Mr. Williams, uh, does this need? Do we need collaboration with other countries, possibly India? As you said, you know, they are a technology hub as well for this tier 4 data center. Really good question. So it's not so in terms of collaboration, we've collaborated with the government of Estonia and that so as Dr. Majan just mentioned, the IOP project, which IOP stands for interoperability. It's a big deal because it allows ministry to ministry to share information securely using our current approaches to deploying uh, information and, and security assets. In other words, we don't need to go to a public cloud or go outside of country to establish uh, interoperability between ministries, departments, and agencies. What that actually means, what it works out to meaning is, let's say you need to have a transaction done at the Ministry of Works and Transport. You're getting a license renewed and they want to see your ID. In the past, the only way to verify that, apart from the actual physical ID document, is to call someone in, 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 in EBC, Elections and Boundaries Commission. Instead, everything can happen digitally, and that's on the basis of an interoperability platform like the Ministry of Digital Transformation is rolling out. So that actually came about because of collaboration and intense work, because I've been in some of those sessions with the members of the government of Estonia and that, that, that side of the planet. But it's not just there. We're getting collabor collaboration support from the government of India. Again, we're building software. It's early days yet, so we can't go into too much detail. But what it means is when we build things like our data center or, or we take advantage of other kinds of digital assets, we aren't starting from ground zero. Yes. We're leveraging innovation that happens globally. And I'll say something that may be a little bit spicy, open your mind. In the past, I used to hear people say, why are we talking to this government and that government? Because there's this sense that if you didn't create it yourself, you didn't build it yourself, it didn't make any sense. But the world is not like that. The world is a connected village of innovation. And so what has been happening is instead, we've been building innovation, they've been being exported. What IGovTT has found a way to do is to bring that innovation into Trinidad and Tobago, apply our own novelty, our own creativity. So come back even to what we built for the CETA management system. We used open source technologies. We used op open approaches. We used things that existed before, but we built something new. So data centers just like that as well, and that we're building something that hasn't been seen in the region before, except for Curacao. Yes. And we are finding ourselves delivering a solution that will solve the country's needs, and in fact, even the region's needs, all on top of collaborative approaches, leveraging the governments of India, the governments of, of Estonia, and anybody else who's willing to partner with us. As long as we can demonstrate the value of that partnership and the strength of the, in, of the innovation, we're going after it. We did hear about the Cybersecurity Investment Tax Allowance, CETA, uh, from the Finance Minister in the last budget. Um, can we expect something, uh, a, a similar um, expectation in terms of an, another announcement in terms of a management system or anything, any planning from iGovTT? So iGovTT is always building. It was building. So for example, we launched uh, the CSME e-application platform last month, or two months ago. We're launching CETA management system this month. In a month from now, we have a couple more launches coming. We're launching probably something every month in this year, because that's what we do, and that's just the software bit of things. Uh, iGovTT just updated this website. It's beautiful, iGovTT.tt. If you go there, you'll see some of the work we're doing. It's a really big deal because a lot of times when you say to people, I work at iGovTT, the general public doesn't have a sense of what that means. Now they can, and they can see the work we're doing. As Dr. Majan mentioned, we do work in procurement, we do work in, in networking, we do uh, monitoring and, and essentially resilience management from our security teams. What that means is we now have a way for the public to see what iGovTT is doing and engage with it and even provide feedback. Dr. Majan, tell us about some of the, you know, some of the achievements of iGovTT in the past uh, five years, the decade or so? So thank you, that's a great question. And iGovTT is a bedrock in the digital landscape of Trinidad and Tobago. But it is not well known because we are a servant 
to these ministries, departments, and agencies. So there's a term that we're looking at, which is powered by GovTT, that we're looking to utilize. Because we would have built many systems that you interact with. For example, you, Sunil, might have tried to get a passport. You would have gone on e appointments. That's iGovTTs. But it's not seen as iGovTT because of the use in which it is operating. Owen just spoke about the CSME. That, I wanted to go back to that. In the past, you had to send in your physical application and would take a period of time to get that processed. We now understand within a week of being launched, 504 applications were received, 504, and many of them being processed. So what that means is that the efficiency and effectiveness is up. We also have Employ TT. So Employ TT came out of a hackathon, so it's a really nice story where some students came, they helped develop the initial code, they developed the concept, we took it, and iGovTT is good at what you call enterprise-ready solutions. So we can take something from being built to where it needs to be in terms of an, a large-scale deployment. And Employ TT is not well known, but it is utilized. The other day we had a client, and the client put out, and I'm, I'm not against traditional media, right, but the client put out a traditional ad. They got 17 applications. When they used the Employ TT, they got 900 applications. Why? Because it's innovative. And Owen will probably talk about some of the AI that we're going to incorporate in there to help not only the client, but also to help the person applying. So those are some examples of some of the products that we have done. We have done also many projects for the ministries in terms of very large procurement that you may have not, and you would probably not know that we're involved in. And we continue to do that in a very safe and effective manner. You would have heard of the Office of the Procurement Regulator, and that's a highly regulated now industry in terms of procurement. But iGovTT is fantastic with its compliance. Fantastic. As a matter of fact, we're one of the few state agencies that have up-to-date audited financial accounts. So that everything that we do is transparent, everything that we do is built on purpose-driven professionals, and we have about 140 of them, and we continue to be excited about what's going to come. Ministry of Digital Transformation with our minister is leading the way. We are the implementation arm, and there are some things that we can't talk about, but we're so excited, we wish we could, that will be launched very soon. You talked about immigration and that, that collaboration you had with uh, setting up that appointment system and so on. I know there's a lot of traffic there, but there's also a lot of traffic, for want of a better term, in the Ministry of Works and Transport Licensing Division. How deep is your collaboration with Licensing Division in terms of this, uh, what IGOV TT does as well? So we are working closely with the Transport Commissioner, and we are trying to help develop some solutions for them. Uh, we can't talk about it just, just yet. We'll leave that for the Transport Commissioner to announce. But we're working in every aspect. Digital transformation is part of our mission. You asked earlier on, what is iGovTT? And it's two things now. It is to be a trusted partner of choice, which we have shown. So we've never had a hack in the last 15 years. I don't know if this is what I'm going to knock on that. And we've never been compromised. We've delivered on-time solutions. And the other part of that is to be a digital transformation company. Digital transformation in its current context is a large exercise. And it means some people think digital transformation is scanning a document and putting it into a database. That's not the case. It is the entire innovative thinking of changing the entire process and turning it on its head. We work with TTPS, the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service, and we're currently looking to help them with several of their processes so that it can be more efficient because they're focused on citizen-focused delivery. That's what we're focused on as well. So we're really quite excited. So Mr. Williams, in every success, there are challenges. Tell us about some of the challenges faced by iGovTT. So it's, it's funny, I, if I could step back a bit from the iGovTT question. To be fair, I started in iGovTT last year. And my journey into iGovTT came because uh, my boss, Deputy CEO, Charles Bob Sample, he sat with me one morning as he's describing what we were looking to do. iGovTT has been evolving and continues to evolve because the digital society around us, the global digital society is always changing. So IGovTT understands the need to change with that. So when he spoke with me, he explained, this is who IGov was. And one of the key challenges was, well, I didn't know that. I came into IGov excited but slightly concerned because I came from the private sector and in my mind, this public sector thing, will it even work out? 
the, the, the biggest shock was to realize that some of the best professionals, consummate professionals, are in IGOV TT. They yeah. work very hard. They work beyond. They, they work beyond what you expect, and even even beyond that, they are they are intelligent. They have experience. They are dedicated. They're loyal. All that stuff that describes the professionals you might associate with the private sector. I found the right the, the very first day I was in IGOV TT, and it allowed me to reduce those walls in my mind about public sector, private sector. So one of the first challenges was kind of me writing myself, writing my mind, coming correct as it were, so that my team got the best of me. And once we started to do that, then there was no, there was, there was no no. There was, can we build this? Yes and when. It was, it was an amazing environment to drop, to drop into. That being the case, we still battle with these perceptions outside of IGOV TT. A challenge sometimes people believing when we say we'll deliver something that they will get it on, on, on time and on target. Uh, the CETA launching is actually a good example of that. The minister launched CETA in the budget last year. We started to work on it shortly thereafter, and in about six months, less than six months, we had this, this platform available. We were talking to stakeholders, letting them see it, getting their feedback on it. And you could, you could, it's interesting, in a virtual meeting, many of which we've had, we were showing off CETA to our stakeholders. So you're showing this management system off to chambers of commerce or business professionals. And you could feel that, that the similar way scales fell off my eyes joining iGov. You, you, it's a virtual meeting, but you could feel that, that, that weight dropping off and people kind of sighing, yes, we'll be in good hands. And so what the challenge of dealing with public perception, of getting people to understand when we meet, say something we can deliver, of getting them to see we deliver our solutions was a critical one. And so that's, that's one of the things I'll share as a big one that I think we've turned around and we're continue, continuing to turn around. We talked about the tier four data center that's, uh, that, that's being built and so on. Um, what are some of the other plans, the immediate plans that iGovTT has in the next uh, upcoming uh, financial year? If I could ask Inshan to help me with this one, I'll start off, but he has a, a much broader sight of what's going on. Our plans involve essentially helping ministries achieve their goals in yes. digital transformation. And um, we have a number of requests right now from various ministries, departments, and agencies. We want to build a website. We want to change how we do things. We like how CETA looks. We want that for us as well. So our plans involve communicating to our, our stakeholders, ensuring they understand, here's what we can do. Here's what we have done. What do you need? But they also involve hiring. We actually need more help. We need a lot more resource to get this done. Anjan Forte sounds like a lot until he realized we are essentially driving transformation at a national level. So almost every team is looking to hire more, hire more professionals who are willing to do this kind of a thing. So there's hiring, there's designing and building new systems, they're supporting the large scale. It's, it's, I can't share them right now, but we have some large scale digital projects in, in place that are coming down that should be released in September even. And so those kinds of projects will affect the nation, will transform how we do business, how we how we allow citizens to experience this digital world, and so we're excited about it. Uh, I'm going to pass back to pass over to Enshan because I'm sure he has more to add to that perspective on what's coming next. So I, I think a great measure of success is time. And Sunil, your time is important to you. Our citizens' time is important to them. So I wanted to go back to one of the successes that we had, which is not necessarily digital, but it's changing a process. The Ministry of Social Development and Family Services has a life certificate exercise that you must do once a year. And you need to go down to the ministry and you spend some time there and you get your certificate. We looked at our TT Connect centers, of which we have seven physical centers because digital inclusion is also important, service is important. If you feel that you can't go online and you don't know and you're, not, you're unsure, you can walk into one of our centers and get help. It's important that we look at the entire population, differently abled as well. So now we've transformed that entire process, and I'm excited about that. 2,600 people so far, over the age of 65, have utilized this. You call our TT Connect line, 800-8826. You get an appointment, and with 15 minutes of arriving at our location, you get served. Can you imagine that? So that individual saved time. All of the projects that Owen just alluded to is to ensure that the citizen saves time, that it's simple, seamless, and you have a good experience. So we are continually working towards those with all the ministries, departments, and agencies towards that objective. 
iGov is basically playing a big part in the, the push for digital transformation and so on. Um, there's a notion from some citizens that it's not moving quick enough. In your opinion, is it moving quick enough? So that's a great question. And the thing is, when I look at that question, I look at how old we are as a nation. And I remember listening to a conversation when there was a royal wedding. And listen to the cook, and they asked him, you know, are you comfortable in terms of preparing this meal? And he said, we've been doing this for 800 years. Do you understand that? So we have nations who, United States over 200 years, France over 200 years, Britain over 1,000 years, who have matured in terms of its entire economy, in terms of its entire maturity skill. We are really a toddler when you think about it. But we are the country, Sunil, that produced the steel pan. We have in our blood the ability to deliver, to be creative, and to do things that nobody else has done. What Irwin's team has done is in-house develop the cybersecurity investment tax allowance with no extra budget, no extra support or hardware, and delivered it within the fiscal in which it was announced. So when I look at things like that, I, I have excitement for us as a country. I know that we can do it, and I know that it is difficult to measure that output because you cannot measure an orange with an apple. Um, your final thoughts? So I just wanted to say that we are excited that the citizens can come to iGovTT, www.igovtt.tt, or you could go to CETA, and you can apply for this tax incentive. Please look at your business. Don't think that you're too small, that you cannot get the benefit of this. Cybersecurity is your responsibility. It is my responsibility. We are here to help you. It is a simple, seamless, effective solution. And iGovTT is here to serve the citizens. We're really excited of what we're going to do next to help the citizens. Your final thoughts, Mr. Williams? I'll just end by saying building progress is a part of our DNA. And that allows us to have a strong sense of destiny with what we're trying to do here. iGovTT is committed to supporting nation building, supporting digital society, digital transformation. And our software activities are part of that milieu. It's not like we're separate from it. And I think that I want to, I want to commend all of the persons who, who would have put their hands on this. We had, we had people who did the analysis before we even started building. We had those who did testing. We had members of our team join. And within a week of joining, added significant components to this push and this move. And so I want to recognize that uh, our DNA in iGov is team-oriented. It's executional. It, we, we do things at a high rate, and we do things really well. So I want to celebrate we got to this point, and there are many more things to, to, to come for the public, and we're looking forward to supporting you in any way we can. We have been speaking with Dr. Inchan Mia John and uh, Mr. Owen Williams from iGovTT, and I'm sure a lot more people understand that iGovTT, what iGovTT does, and I know they're basically in the background of some of these services, but I'm, I'm sure they understand what exactly and your role and function in the, the service of children and the baby. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thanks, Alex. Thank you. Join us at the same time next week for another episode of Delving Deeper. And as we wrap up, let me just take this opportunity to wish all the fathers out there a happy Father's Day. I am Sunulala on behalf of the entire group. Have a great night.